Lady Nagant's fate is revealed, Overhaul and Midoriya make a deal, and a top heroes finally come face to face with All For One. Let's talk about all of this and more as we dive right into the newest chapter of My Hero Academia. So My Hero Academia Chapter 316 is finally out. And with it, we get to witness the heartbreaking epilogue to the fight between the woman who puts double the ass in Assassin, Lady Nagant, and our green-haired protagonist, Izuku Midoriya. God, it still hurts. At least we'll always have fanfiction. Oh god, that's not what I meant! Turn it off! Turn it off! In this chapter, Midoriya makes a surprising deal with Overhaul, Endeavor and Japan's current top functioning heroes all team up, and our beloved heroes finally get their first big lead on Shigaraki and All For One's location. But before I begin talking about this chapter, I'm first going to go into a quick summary of what happened last time. And as usual, don't forget to Detroit smash that like button and slide into that subscribe button's DMs to hit that notification bell. In the last chapter, our goddess queen Lady Nagant decided that Overhaul getting the ever-loving god beat out of him by Midoriya, losing his entire empire, his quirk, his arms, his freedom, and the only way of waking up his adoptive father from a coma wasn't enough of a punishment. And so she resident eviled her arm and attempted to put a bullet straight through his head. In seeing this attempt, Midoriya, being the hero that he is, chose to deny his one-time rival's chance to enjoy the sweet release of debt, and using his new super move, Pseudo 100%, which is the combination of the quirks Fa Jing, Black Whip, and One For All, he managed to travel faster than a speeding bullet and save the oblivious Chisaki. In all honesty though, with the speed Midoriya was traveling at, it's an absolute miracle he didn't just accidentally A-train overhaul. Having miraculously outplayed Lady Nagant once again, Midoriya, using his new gained momentum and Black Whip, slingshots himself straight at Lady Nagant, 100% smashing her arm, ultimately winning the fight. Nagant, realizing that she he just lost to a teenage boy who willingly dresses up as a green bunny begins to have a mental breakdown. But Midoriya activates his super duper protagonist powers and catches Nagant's arm as she begins to fall, curing her PTSD and depression. Now that's Midoriya's real power. But just as Nagant decides that maybe she doesn't want to be the bad guy anymore, Horikoshi proves once and for all that we live in an endless cycle of torment and suffering all for a false belief that someday we may obtain the universally unobtainable feeling of happiness by making the new fan favorite and one of the most interesting characters in the entire series explode. The human testicle head reveals that he put this safety measure in Lady Nagant in case she turned sides. And the last thing we saw in this chapter was the winged hero Hawks jumping in to catch his falling senpai. And this is where chapter 316 picks up. This chapter opens up exactly where the last chapter left off, as Endeavor arrives onto the scene where Lady Nagant and Midoriya had their epic fate. Off. Endeavor informs Midoriya that they received the call from All Might telling them that he was in danger, and he apologizes to Midoriya about arriving late, as his flames aren't as powerful in the rain. Endeavor then asks Midoriya if there is any other threats in the area, but before Midoriya can respond, the two heroes are promptly interrupted by a screaming Hawks who has just realized that his feathers aren't strong enough yet to allow him to fly, so he is just plummeting to his death holding on to the corpse of the greatest waifu to ever grace this godforsaken realm of existence. I mean, that's one hell of a way to go if you ask me. Seeing this, Midoriya uses the last of his strength to conjure up Black Whip, and he catches the two Public Safety Commission survivors before they both can meet their untimely end. As Midoriya grabs onto Hawks, he informs the Chicken Man that Lady Nagant's explosion wasn't self-inflicted, and it was probably the result of safety measures all for one added onto the quirk he gave her. Hearing this, Hawks then begins to loudly introduce himself to Lady Nagant, informing her that he is her successor. And he does as every Nagant simping fanboy would, and desperately tries to wake her up. The nearly wingless chicken yells at his senpai that he can't believe she would let herself get manipulated by the potato-headed all for one. But he knows that after fighting with Midoriya, she should now realize her mistakes. That it's still too early to give up on Hero Society. And following this, Hawks dramatically calls out to Nagant, begging her to wake up and to give them some hope, saying, you can't die after being manipulated. You are a hero. 
your Lady Nagant. As these words echo through the darkened streets, a glimmer of hope appears as Nagant's eyes briefly open up, and the first thing she sees is her successor perilously reaching out to save her. In seeing Hawks, Nagant thinks to herself that if he is her successor, then the commission must have forced him to do all sorts of terrible things. Yet, he still somehow has the same eyes as Midoriya, and the eyes she wants once had herself in her ute. The fiery eyes of a hopeful hero who hasn't given up. And like a gift from the gods above, God bless you Horikoshi, Nagant, now filled with newfound hope, fully opens her eyes and lets out a scream informing the heroes about the orders she received from All For One. Nagant lets our heroes know that she was supposed to bring Midoriya to a mansion in High Bori Forest in the next two months. And she warns them that All For One has taken in other super powerful villains from Tartarus besides her. And as she says this, we see this shot here of All For One standing in front of his silhouetted new super villain team. From the looks of it, there are going to be seven new villains that Midoriya and the gang will have to face off against. Now, there really isn't much information we can get from them off this picture, but there are two things that I do want to mention. Firstly, this guy right here kind of resembles Chojuro Khan or Chimera from the Hero Risings movie. Now, it would make sense that Khan would have been locked up in Tartarus after the events of Heroes Rising, but it's also very unlikely Horikoshi would bring in movie characters into the main plot. I mean, we did see a glimpse of Nine in the manga already, but I feel like that was more of a nod to the movies than anything else. Although, I will say that Chimera was a pretty badass villain, so in the unlikely chance that it is him, I wouldn't be disappointed at all. The other thing I wanted to mention about this image is this guy right here. Initially, when I saw this shot, I didn't even realize that he was there. But after noticing him, I found it interesting how he is in the foreground unlike the rest of the villains. Could it be implying that he is actually closer to All For One than any of the others? Or was it just easier to place him here in this image because he's so small? Let me know if you have any theories or information on who these characters are in the comments below. I'd love to know what you guys think about them. But anyway, after Nagant finishes telling the heroes everything she knows about All For One's plan, she asks Hawks how he can stay so hopeful after everything the Public Safety Commission has done. To which, our beloved Bird Boy replies that it's because he has someone to support him, as we get a quick flash of the image of Hawks holding on to his Endeavor plushie. Hawks mentions that it's also because, overall, he's just a pretty optimistic guy. Upon finishing up this conversation, Endeavor rushes into the scene holding onto a screaming overhaul who, while trapped in Endeavor's arms, begins to panic, as it occurs to him that Nagant will no longer be able to fulfill her end of their bargain, and he begs the heroes to bring him to his boss, because he wants to apologize. Midoriya, realizing that he just risked his life to save Chisaki's stupid ass, gives him the side look of disgust, and he tells Chisaki that if he can take that unrelenting desire to apologize for his mistakes and focus it towards Eri, then he will fulfill Nagant's promise and take him to his boss. Hearing Midoriya speak, Overhaul initially roars at him telling him to shut up, but after listening to what Midoriya has to say, he thinks about how Eri is the key to healing his adoptive father, and he is shocked when Midoriya offers to fulfill Nagant's deal. Now, Midoriya offering to bring Overhaul to his boss isn't a surprise in any regard. I'm pretty sure everyone expected it to happen in some way. But with the way Overhaul is reacting, it feels more like they're setting him up to try and use Eri again rather than having him be redeemed, which I think would be a lot more interesting. Also, I gotta say that during Midoriya's conversation with Overhaul, we get this shot here of Midoriya, and I don't know why, but it gives me vibes of OG Season 1 Midoriya, and I absolutely love it. But after Midoriya and Overhaul's conversation ends, All Might pulls up in his car, and the scene fades out with Midoriya, Nagant, and Overhaul being brought to the hospital, as Midoriya looks over Nagant's broken body while angrily thinking about All For One. The story then cuts to some time in the future, where we see Midoriya, now back wearing his full hero outfit, cape and all, storming All For One's mansion in High Bori Forest, alongside in 
Endeavor, Genist, Kamui Woods, Edshot, and Mount Lady. As Midoriya rushes ahead of his pro hero companions, he notes how All For One and Shigaraki still aren't ready to take one for all. Once the heroes enter the mansion, they are immediately met with silence and an empty room. As Midoriya walks further into the room, a hologram of All For One appears and he begins to do what he does best and monologues. All For One tells Midoriya that he is delighted to see his prediction that Nagant would spill the beans on his location and he informs the heroes that everything is still going exactly to how he planned it. All For One then proceeds to tell Midoriya that the path he has chosen is a hard one. The more he fights, the more worn down he will become, which will eventually lead to him giving up as in reality there is no end to this battle. And with this, All For One leaves Midoriya with the parting words that he no longer cares about All Might. The only person he is interested in is Midoriya. And Chapter 316 comes to an end with All For One pointing at Midoriya, paralleling All Might at Kamino Ward, exclaiming, now it's your turn. As the final shot we see is the High Bori Mansion exploding. What's with everyone exploding? Overall, it was another good chapter. Nagant surviving the explosion was kind of expected with how the previous chapter ended, but nonetheless, it's great to know that the world's beloved waifu is still alive and kicking. Hawks' whole interaction with Nagant was fantastic, and learning that he was brought in to be her successor is a great way of showing us not only why Hawks was able to bring himself to kill twice, but also how he and Nagant are two sides of the same coin. Overhaul's resolution felt a bit rushed, but I'm sure we will be seeing more of it further down the line. The reveal that All For One has acquired a new team of super powerful villains is really interesting, but also poses the question of how long this final arc will actually be. Like, are these new villains going to be big players in the coming arc, or are they primarily going to be fodder for the side characters while the main cast deal with their evil counterparts? I guess time will tell. As for All For One not being in the forest mansion and having it explode with the heroes inside, I feel as though this is setting up for a big cliffhanger. My prediction is the next chapter will either cut over to UA, where we will see what is happening with the rest of Class 2A, or we will see a bit more about what exactly the villains are doing. But let me know what you think of this chapter. If you liked this video, don't forget to leave a like and comment what you think is going to happen next. For more My Hero content, subscribe to the Lunchtime Crew. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Plus Ultra.